It's break time. Taking a break is sponsored by our good friends up at Banks Boats. You ask, what is taking the break? Well, it's everything else that I enjoy about our sport of waterfowling. It's all about the ducks, the dogs, and the decoys. Let's check it out. Comes another pair into us. Hit the room, Jack. Welcome to the Haverty Grace Decoy Museum. Welcome to the Haverty Grace Decoy Museum. My name is R. Madison Mitchell. You know, over the years, Haverty Grace has become known as the decoy capital of the world. Rightly so, because our community has produced a wealth of fine talent. I'm proud to say the art and tradition continues today with boys like Jimmy Pierce, Charles B. Joyner, and Captain Harry Joke. Of course, through the years, methods and techniques have changed. Cost has changed a bit, too. In the old days, you could buy a can or a blanket for a dollar and a quarter. Now, that is going back to the 40s. Those were sometimes they were. I remember a regular gathering spot, Bob McGaw's shop on Washington Street and Lodge Alley. It was kind of our unofficial headquarters. There was one day, in fact, in 1942, I'll never forget, a fellow by the name of Bodine photographed a few of us sitting around the old coal stove. I can still see it clear as day. Seated on the right is Big Paul Gibson. He just came in from hunting. He had been gunning the river hills with Lou Claire. He brought his dog in, too. Paul had his own shop on Ontario Street. Plus, he worked at a regular job in Lou Claire's grocery store. Paul was a storyteller. He was. He could talk your ear off if you got him started. There was me, next to Paul, <laughs> wearing my bow tie as always. I never worked a day without it. I had a real fondness for hunting too. But the problem was, with running my funeral business, making all these birds, I never could find time to put it in. Fueling the stove was the old Irishman himself, Bob McGaw. He could carve as pretty as you please, but I'll tell you, next to his reputation as a decoy maker, he was probably better known as a jokester. He was always playing tricks, one kind or another, on unsuspecting visitors to his shop. Seated on the left, cradling his shotgun, is Lou Claire. We call him Pop. He owned a grocery store in town. Pop Claire was not a carver, but he was one of the family, nevertheless. Yes, sir, those were very special times. Good people dedicated to the craft, the art of decoy making. But now, see for yourself. Through our museum, you'll find the work of these men and many others. Discover the beauty of this unique American book art. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Mr. Barney Edwards and Mr. Spielman. Barney's checking the mechanism of his gun, making sure it's working properly. Looks like Alvin over in the background. And here comes one. And there goes one. Oh, Johnny Clark retrieving it. He's one of the best retrievers we have. Every now and then the water gets a little too deep for him. 
That was Taking a Break, sponsored by our good friends from Banks Boats. Break's over. Let's get back to the hunt.